In today's video, I'm going to talk about how we can get real world dividends and estimate the return from the constant growth dividend model. So we're going to use Yahoo Finance. So if you go to Yahoo Finance, and suppose I want to look at Pepsi. So PEP is the ticker you would type in and click on Pepsi. We then go to historical data. And we can see that the last adjusted close is 178.01. So that's our price we'll need here in a moment. To get the dividends, if I want five years worth, I'll change the time period to 5Y, dividends only. Go ahead and just make it monthly. This won't matter as much. Apply. You see now we have the new data. Download the data. And then we'll open up an Excel. And you'll get something to the effect of something like this over here. Expand the columns to show all the dates. So what we'll do using this data, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. I looked at this from a physical or when they actually modified their dividend policy, because at least for Pepsi, fortunately, it was consistent across quarters. Um, and when they adjusted it, this isn't always the case. If it is, you can do this, what I'm calling the fiscal year. And then over here, I've got the actual. For the physical or fiscal, I looked at the 2018. You can see in 2018, it went from 0.805 to 0.928 and then was consistent for the remaining three quarters. That was the number that I used and multiplied by four to get what would we call the fiscal 2018 year dividend. So I did that for each of those. Multiply by four since there's four quarters in a year. And I know that for 2022, at least at this point, there'll be another dividend coming, but we can project out the next two dividends are probably a dollar 15 unless something catastrophic happens or good happens, it might bump up. For the actual, I just summed up the dividends for each year. So there's 2018 number. You can see they're a little bit lower. And then for the final year, I know that there's the, we haven't seen it the last dividend yet, but I'm just estimating that it will be indeed, it will indeed be with a 1.15. So I just added it again here. To calculate growth rates, we use the rate function. So the number of periods is gonna be the 2022 in cell D6 minus cell D2 is 2018. That'll give you four years. We're going for four years, five, five years worth of data. We grow for four of those. So we go from 2018, 2019, one, two, three, four. So four years there. Whoops. And then the we don't include a payment, even though the dividends are changing. This rate function just it needs two inputs to be accurate. The, the, the dividends are changing every period, so we won't put in a payment. We'll put in a PV. We'll start off at the 2018 number or earliest data point. And I put a minus sign in front of it for the cash flow sign convention because otherwise Excel will give you an error. So if I did that, you can see that it won't work. So I just put a minus in there. You could also have done that for the future rate, but then you get a negative, um, you get a negative rate, which we know is not the case because this is growing. The numbers are getting bigger over time. Actually, it works that way too. So you can put the minus either way. The future rate E6 made the 2022 dividend. And I click OK. And then I use the same formula essentially to do the actual. The 2023 forecasted dividend is one of the stars there. This is equal to the previous dividend multiplied by one plus that growth rate. So using the fiscal data, that'd be 485, and then the actual would be 479. So we saw earlier the price was 177.19. That's what the um, trading was at end of day um, from the prior. So just refreshing that. So you see, was the just to close was 177.19 of air price. The growth is the growth rate. So we calculated. Price the same for that. And then there's 2023 forecast dividends for each. So the dividend model, the constant growth model, says that the price today is equal to the next period's dividend divided by R minus G. I can solve for R to get the dividend yield plus the growth rate. That's how it breaks down for dividend paying stocks. So I take the um, D1 or the 2023 dividend divided by the P0 current price plus the growth rate. And that would get me what the market is, the market return 
or the current price level. Okay, so, you know, this is saying that if you're okay with the 8.25% return, then, you know, if you require at least that or maybe less, you should buy Pepsi. But if you require a rate of return higher than that, you should sell Pepsi. Um, so, for instance, if I change this 177.19 to 180, we'll see that the return is lower um, because the price is going up. So, that's another way you can say, well, maybe I think Pepsi should be priced at 150. Well, if that's the case, you would not buy the stock right now. But if you think, um, you know, Pepsi should be priced at 200, then you would buy right now because it's only selling for 177.19. And then vice versa um, in terms of whether you're buying or selling. If I did it using the actual data, the market returns a little bit higher at 8.67%. That would be, in essence, what the market's saying your current return is if you buy Pepsi at 177.19, which you should expect, uh, what, you know, what the market required return would be. But if you desire more than that, um, you would not buy Pepsi right now. So, for instance, you know, if Pepsi's price was 150, it'd be giving you 916. If you like that, um, then you would buy Pepsi at 150. Um, if that's what your return would be, if that's what you want it to be. One other thing you can do, so suppose, for example, you want uh, to set the market return to be 10% and um, you want to see what price would be, what price would be required for that given this data. You could do this for either one, but um, I actually use this one um, or the more conservative approach which is not necessarily done in industry, but what you could say is you could take the lower growth, um, the lower dividend, let's put in the 177.19, right, sober. So if I want to go seek and make this 10% as the target, I would need to find what price would that need to be? What price would Pepsi need to be selling at? to actually buy it. Um, so I go to data, what if, goal seek. I'm just using 10% because that's the historical return, usually historical required return. So I'm gonna set that value equal to 10% and I'm gonna change the price. You can see that Pepsi would need to be selling at 107.83 in order for me to buy it. And if we look historically at the 107.83, um, we would have to go way back. It's been quite a while since Pepsi sold at that. So it's probably not going to happen really anytime soon unless we have something happen in the market. So I mean, the latest, it was even near that point. Um, let's see here. Well, it did there for a while. The last time was in 2019, um, but since then it's been growing. The price has been growing, so um, that's not going to be, you know, unless something catastrophic happens in the market, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon, so it may have to adjust your expectations regarding Pepsi if you want to, if you want to buy them.